On this journey, we knew there would be surprises in store. We expected to meet new people and hear untold stories to learn the truths behind the lore. Along the way, we discovered the hidden gems of Ireland. We've prepared the best that we could for this trip. We arrived on a shoestring budget. We are striving for improvements with better equipment for future episodes of Hidden Gems. There's a cancer in that house. Anyone who stays and it gets eaten from the inside out. I'm not, I'm not going to say it's paranormal, but what it does feel like is that there is something about the energy of it and those who are drawn to it, to live in it, have um, high anxiety, possible psychological issues, and this exacerbates them. And like I said, like eats it from the inside the cancer. That is... I'd live in any place I wouldn't fucking live there. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just really bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's beyond messed up right there. Yeah, I don't get it. Uh-huh. I don't get that from this at all. I do get a lot of sadness with this particular house. Yeah. But it's not the sadness. It's not the sadness. Oh, okay. <coughs> it's so, okay. Verify. And there's a roof over there right in there. But I'm, but I'm being told what I'm seeing myself, as I'm sure Gwen would be if she wasn't having to film my crazy ass, is, um, people hiding in those tree lines with those the, the weapons that had the bayonets, bayonets on them mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. yeah because you can see them in the tree lines it's like they're, they're hot, they're hot. all you can see is a little point of them mm -hmm. but it's not a sword it's a bayonet attached to a rifle mm -hmm. is that accurate yep okay <laughs> you're on it okay Have you ever seen somebody so tripped while talking to dead folk? <laughs> jagged they all stand here it goes on like a jagged oh by the way little young people in this area come in here and actually try to do seances Good time. Um, okay but this having been said they do that odds are they don't have the juice to bring something forward but if they do there are those in here whose negative energy would be something you don't want to bring out. Okay? Very violent. And this is not reaching on this one, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say that they, they don't mind the white meat. <laughs> they eight people. Oh <laughs> that didn't be good. Go 
Can you feel okay? You good? Oh, I'm good. You good? I'm good. I was not aware this was going to be the adventure of the day. <laughs> I thought we were having a little soldier up the town. <laughs> <laughs> no, not with NASA. <laughs> I should go in a contract. Wow. It was like I had four glasses of wine. I was completely disorientated. My vision was blurred. Everything was dizzy. I seen colours and black spots and looks like another bricked in area over there. This is the, this is the one I want to show you something. That body in here keeps feeling cast off. Cast off. Yeah. Not Worthy? Mm -hmm. Not worthy. Cast off. Just put them over there. Yeah. Hi. You see all the little rocks? Mm hmm. People couldn't afford headstones. Maybe more the peasant type of crowd. Cast off. Okay. Um, a lot of the places as well. If we get out to Mars, I hope we get out to Mars uh, while you're here. And um, you'll see little point, uh, half the size of those stones in the ground sticking up, and they were children's toys. Oh wow! A lot of, lot of famine burials and famine related stuff here. Alright, so like our first day that we were there, we were walking through this lovely little town, Ballasreen, and over there in Ireland, which I didn't even know existed. Um, Same. You know, <laughs> until uh, until Vanessa met um, Mike Phillips, and we were staying at Spellman's uh, Hotel there, lovely little place, by the way. And we walked through the town, Vanessa was doing her thing, doing her readings and all that, and then we were taken to... A location that is known so it's not exactly a hidden gem but it is a gem in its own right but I think it's misunderstood is the, Absolutely. Best, way to, is the best way to put it what's your take on this location and go ahead and describe your feelings on cave of the cats this was a real treat for me and I, I have to be honest I don't think that I fully understood the importance of this particular location until we actually got there. I, I really didn't. Um, I knew that it felt important. I knew that we had to do it. But keep in mind, I was, I was dealing with my biggest fear, and that's claustrophobia. And I knew that I was going to have to crawl into the earth. I was going to have to wiggle my chubby little butt down this chute and and into the earth. And I, 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 I didn't express it fully to you or, or to Susie or Mike or Mick or anybody else, but I was absolutely petrified. I was shaking in my boots.
And literally, and when we got there, the the calm, the calm just kind of came over me, and I felt very welcomed. I felt very wanted, and it it was it was somewhat of a of a of a homecoming. That that feeling of there you are. And I just, I know that sounds very bizarre about what many people would call a hole in the ground. Or, was, yeah. or, so, or some people call the gateway to hell. True. Which, True. Is, which, in all fairness, is on the side. Exactly. But people are also using their preconceived notions of what hell means in today's text. That was not the original definition of that word. It's a simple, simple education of, of oneself to realize that how we perceive a word today is not the origination of it. And it simply meant underworld. Underworld does not mean negative, demonic, bad, anyway. Underworld simply means under the world underground it was a word you could take quite literally and it, it has been spun in so many ways to have negative connotations to make people think something dark and evil and it was everything but yes how do you yes. feel about that well i could tell you i was i think i was very quiet the car trip over there. I had so many different emotions. Um, I was excited. Uh, I knew this was a, an, an opportunity of a lifetime. Um, I don't know if, I, if I'll ever get a chance to go again, but rest assured, if I ever go back to Ireland, I don't care what part of Ireland I ever go back to, I will make a point to go back to this cave, which is also known as Morgan's Cave. I will also take an offering like we did last time. We'll get more into that later on too. Um, but I was, I felt unsure. I felt unworthy. Exactly. It's hard to explain that, isn't you it? You know, I felt, do I dare enter? What's going to happen? Um, is this going to be okay? Am I going to be accepted by the earth, by, by Morgan, by whatever is there? Is it going to accept me? Am I going to be okay? Am I going to be a changed person when I come out? And if I am, is it going to be for better or for the worst? Well, and, you know? and we need, we need to preface by saying that as you stated, you know, before and in other interviews, this is this isn't a necessarily a a hidden gem because people do know about it that having been said it has been in at least in our minds disrespected and yes. that is i believe where for both of us some of the apprehension came into play is are we going to be perceived as the same type of people right. that showed up before and didn't look at this as as the honor that it was but I tell you, all of what you just said, <clears throat> excuse me, was going through my, my mind because of what we didn't realize at the time while riding there, because of all the disrespect and misrepresentation that had been done before by various shows or what have you, I was put at ease before we even got to the cave. And I'll tell you when it happened. It's when we got there and we were greeted by a black cat. You remember that? Yes, we were. It tried. As if to say, hi. <laughs> this beautiful, beautiful, I mean, long, thick, 
beautiful fur, black cat just came out of nowhere. We hadn't even gotten to the cave because where we parked, you had to walk a little ways. And this beautiful black cat just came. There's no houses. Mm -mm. This cat just came from nowhere and even tried to jump up in the vehicle Mm -hmm. while we were getting out. And I was like, no, 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 kitty. You know, because I'm sitting here going, this must be your home. You know, Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I don't want you to stray from your home. And what got me was not only did the cat greet us, the cat led us to where the cave was. Once we got to the cave in our excitement of, Ooh, this is the cave. And we were reading the sign that was there. I didn't see the cat anymore. No, the cat was gone. Yep. Oh yeah. Completely gone. It just and I'm getting, I'm getting a little choked up now thinking about it because I'm like, that's when I was put completely at ease. My fear of going into this cave was gone. It vanished. It was like, come in. I've been waiting for you. What took you so long? Come in. That's a very, that is something I want to point something out real quick because I don't know if a lot of people know this, or I mean, granted, a lot of people haven't ventured where we have, Mm -hmm. but that is something that I have had happen multiple times in Ireland is they, you seem to be greeted by the wildlife in the strangest ways. Uh, Me at Hellfire Club with the stag. Yeah. Me at Lep Castle with the cat. You Mm -hmm. at Cave of the Cats with the cat. They, Mm -hmm. they show us, they lead us, they give us that strength and that, that comfort of saying we know you're here we know why you're here by all means please continue that's a blessing and i think because what our intentions were for hidden gems excuse me again what our intentions were our intentions were good it was not to make a mockery of things it was not to get ratings or to say "Ooh, this is scary Ooh, this is demonic The cat knew, nature knew what our intentions were to show the truth of it, to show the beauty of it, to show a different side of it. And it was like, oh, we've been waiting for you. What took you so long? Come this way. Exactly. You know.
I, I, I'm still amazed I did it. I'm so I'm still proud amazed of you. I did it. Thank <laughs> you. I'm, pro- I'm proud of you because that was, uh, I mean, at any, without being there, people, and granted, you've got video. Thank goodness you've got video. I knew the GoPro would come in handy. <laughs> I'm telling you, because there is no way to describe exactly what the entrance and the descent, which is really what it is, is like. And once you get down there, you are just enveloped in this energy. It's mm-hmm. it's not static. No. It hums, but it hums at such a frequency that it almost feels like like the air is undulating. That's the best way I can put it. Mm-hmm. And you, it's it okay. Actually, let's put it this way. Best way ever. Imagine that you are at the entrance of the ocean. Only you are completely in water up to your head, but it's not water. That's what it felt like to me. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was like once I got down there because you and Susie got down there first. Yes. Because I was trying to hold the GoPro. Bless you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I ended up leaving my bag because I had like a small, it wasn't big. It was like a small backpack. And I was like, you know what? I'm not, I even put it like on the front of my chest. I was trying to think of ways to take it down with me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to do this old school tiny GoPro and a flashlight. So that, yep. <laughs> so I'm on my back wiggling down this mud and rock and everything else. But I get down there. But when my feet hit the bottom. And when I stopped for a second to kind of gather my senses to realize, okay, I'm at the bottom. Moment my feet hit the bottom, it was like, for me, it was like a tingling that I could feel, a a warm tingling from the bottom of my feet. And it just resonated and went all the way up to my head. It was very calming and very soothing. And I was like, wow you know oh, yeah. that is amazing and what really got me was when we when i oh goodness you okay Sorry, yes are no, you okay <laughs> you're gonna make it <laughs> i am i okay. am i'm but, gonna um, live you're gonna live <laughs> <laughs> but we um what got me was when <clears throat> Everything was so calm, and yeah, you're, you're you're under you're underground, way underground, and naturally it's a cave, so the the walls are wet, you know they're they're moist and all that, but there was no dripping water, there was no running water, nothing like that. It wasn't until the three of us were lined up a certain way, then all of a sudden it was like tiny little raindrops, just faintly. Susie was the one I think that first noticed it. She was like, y'all feel that? This didn't start until Gwen got down here. It Mm -hmm. waited until we were together. Then when you shut the lights off, and I wish I could have caught this on the GoPro. I don't think I was able to. But when you shut the lights off and you look up and it looked like a galaxy. Exactly. Like a blanket of stars. It was, it's amazing. It was the most amazing, humbling experience. And people need to understand when you said, when you turn the flashlight off, y'all, this is as dark as dark can get.
there is absolutely zero light source. Yes. And you were in there with nothing but the sound of your heartbeat, the sound of your breathing, and whatever the gods or goddesses, Morgan, bless her, choose to let you hear and see. Yes. You're literally at the mercy. Literally. And then when Vanessa asked for permission to retrieve some of the clay, because Vanessa had fallen the first day we got there and had scraped her legs up, her, her knees, especially, uh, I think it was one of your knees was really bad. Let's go ahead and just call a spade a spade, Gwen. We get off the bus. I hug Mike. I take five steps and I face plant on the sidewalk of Balladrine, Ireland. Let's call a spade a spade. It is what I, it is. I didn't have my camera rolling. It was probably a good thing I didn't because I'd have been no more good the rest of the trip. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I'm here all week, folks. I'm here all week, okay? Vanessa and Mike are side by side just walking. I'm behind them. I'm just pulling my little suitcase. I'm all excited. Ooh, I'm in Ireland. All of a sudden, Vanessa, they're just talking. Vanessa's bam. <laughs> And Mike is mid-sentence, and he, Vanessa! <laughs> Mad skills, right here, hey, this girl. We're, hey, we're from America. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> if they couldn't tell before, they knew right then. Oklahoma, Virginia. How you doing? I know, right? <laughs> so, so, long story short, what we needed was that clay Right. To put on my wounds because they were pretty substantial. Yes. And we were um, advised by, uh, by Susie and by Mike, I believe, mm -hmm. that the clay um, was very healing. So Vanessa asked permission from Morgan if she could retrieve some of the clay. She had rubbed some of the clay on, on her knees, which we were already covered anyway, um, because we believe in being respectful and we are raw and we are hardcore. And we believe in doing it correctly. So we went down with nothing but what was on us. No coverage, no protection, no biohazard crap, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. We went down the way it was intended for you to go down there. So we were already covered. But she went ahead and rubbed some on her knees. Um, we had some small little bottles, not big jugs or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. She retrieved some of the clay.
and uh, Vanessa and I also brought offerings. And we left the offerings, which we saw where people had left offerings. So we thought, oh, that's a good spot. So we left our offerings there. We said a few words. We asked for protection throughout our trip. And protection we did get because the whole trip throughout the entire trip until we landed back in the States, we were followed by a load. I mean, a load of ravens, crows, which are associated with Morrigan. Yes. Our send off. Yes. Our, our send, send off, off was in Balladrine remarkable. Was, it was in, I've never seen anything like that. Never. Um, we've had people say, well, you know, they're not unusual here, but the amount of them and wherever we went, there they were. Um, um, it, one, even in the middle of the night. I got to say, one of the cemeteries that Vanessa and I went to alone, we went to walk into the cemetery and it was late. It was like one in the morning, something mm -hmm. like that. I mean, it was late. They just started cawing. It had to have been at least 30 or 40 of them. They just started cawing so loudly. And this was a cemetery that the locals, even some of the homeless, would not go in. And we never felt threatened. This is no. where some, this is where nuns and priests were buried. And we're talking about two pagans here. Mm -hmm. And we but never again, felt threatened because they sexual. knew our intentions. They knew we were coming in to learn their story. We weren't coming in disrespectfully. As a matter of fact, I believe. I was wearing my, my uh, pentagram, and I believe I took it and put it behind my shirt as a sign of respect. Exactly. You don't have to discount your own beliefs to, to no. respect another's. No. Before we, we, we went to the churches, what did I do with my pentacle, well, my pentagram? Mm -hmm. What did I do with it? Put it in your shirt. I put it behind my shirt as a sign of respect. I am able to do that. You because know. you know it doesn't lessen your belief system. No, it doesn't lessen my beliefs. It shows character as a from one human being to another. You know, I'm not exactly going to go in not. somebody else's house of worship and disrespect them. I'm not about that. And the entities know that. They really do. And that's, mm -hmm. you know what, I think that's really what we're trying not to prove, but to show with this particular series that we're doing with Hidden Gems is you don't have to go in and say, prove that you're here to me, scratch me, push me, you know, you don't have to say all these things. You don't have to assume that something is negative. Why not speak to them as if they were in their corporal form standing right in front of you? You wouldn't walk into somebody's house and say, push me, right. <laughs> you wouldn't do that. You know, right. that's rude. You're These on are their cool. turf. Exactly right. And when they allow us, and it's them allowing, not us, when they allow us the grace of an interaction, when they allow us to see them or hear them or feel them, that is a blessing. They're giving us a gift. Yes. That gives us a a small insight into what happens after we pass. Mm -hmm. The the least we can do is show our respect for that. Absolutely. The the one pet peeve, you and I have discussed this many times when people investigate is when they ask for something and then they get it and then they get mad. You asked for it. <laughs> Did you shove me? Are you a demon? Um, just because they scratched you, just because they shoved you, or they threw a pebble at you, or they did whatever, does not make them evil. Maybe that's the only way they knew to give you a sign. 
Well, and you don't know how much energy that may have took for them to do that. And when you asked for a sign, don't get mad and overreact for dramatization purposes because you got what you asked for. Good gravy. You got blood drawn on you. Yes. I had my eye jacked up. Mm -hmm. We got a a phone thrown at us. I got a phone thrown at us. Um, I got very overwhelmed a a couple of different times. Did me or you ever once get angry about what was happening? No. No. That's what we were there for. Exactly. That's what we flew across the ocean for. That's what our sponsors sponsored us for, to go and find this out. Exactly. We were doing our job. This yeah. was not this was not a hobby. We weren't hobbyists. We no. were doing our job. Exactly. That's what we're trying to get out there is to show people that we're not saying our way is the 100% right way. What we are saying is our way is the right way for us. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, just, you know, being two, two women from the South trying to bring the best possible information that we can at locations that you may or may not have heard of that aren't readily available to the people in the, in the States, especially. Um, we hope y'all, we hope y'all enjoy it. We hope you appreciate the time it took to, to put all this together. And we hope you see our love for what we do. And to add to that, even if there's locations that you have heard about and you have watched, such as Cave of the Cats, that maybe we shed some different light on it to make you go, oh, wow, I didn't know that. And maybe you have a little bit of a different perspective of it, maybe a different appreciation for it. Because the location, the land, the country really is a beautiful, mysterious place. It really is. And so many of us have ancestral roots from that area, even if it's just a little bit, Mm -hmm. you know, even if it's just a little bit. And it's really a wonderful thing. And I'm so excited to get the rest of these episodes together because it's like I told you on our flight home, I'm so anxious to show people here in the States, especially just how much alike we all really are. Absolutely. It's, it's phenomenal. It really is. That is the thread that ties all of this history together is one simple common denominator. Everyone wants to simply be heard. Absolutely. Nobody likes to be ignored. No. Or forgotten. Exactly. They just want to be heard. One of the biggest treats we had while we were in Ireland was investigating the Cave of the Cats. Rothcron, near Tulsk in County Roscommon, Ireland, was once the capital of Connacht. It is a very distinct archaeological area that has been written about many times, dating back to medieval Ireland as one of the six royal sites of Ireland. Some of the areas written about date all the way back to 4000 B.C. Rothcron is said to be an entrance to the underworld and has connections to the she, which are fairies, Maeve, and the Morgan, the goddess. They are believed to be strong connections to Samhain, associated with the Cave of the Cats as well. Irish believe their beloved ancestors, spirits, and gods would rise from the sacred burial grounds and walk amongst them. Not all of these were friendly, as the tales of monsters and other destructive beings have also been passed down, first through orators, then through the written word. All of these tales are colorful and filled with mystery, their fantastical nature begging you to explore them, to lose yourself in a small piece of history that is becoming all but forgotten.
we noticed. You better see the steeple in this. Yeah. I think that's kind of interesting. I'm not saying it's paranormal. I'm not. But, but we noticed when we walked up here, as soon as we got to the cemetery, a bunch of the crows started. Oh, yes. It was dead silent until we walked up here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. We would have heard them. Yeah. Over there. We would have heard them. We are in the cemetery, which is ironically right below the college that we were just exploring yesterday. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Really? And I was just using my flash yeah, you were. outside the gate. Now it's, now it's back on again. Okay. Okay, quit boring on me. I did. Look at that. Yep. It's blurring. Totally on. blurring on me. Okay. Okay, so now it's not. Okay. It's so blurry. Move that light. Let me see if it's doing this, if it does the same thing. No. It's not caused by the lights. I'm gonna take a picture of that. My spotlight wasn't causing it. Mm -hmm. I moved it away, and it was still blurry. Wow. Still blurry. Still blurry. Crystal clear. Yep. Now, now it's clear. clear. That's somebody on the other side of the fence. Yeah. There's houses there. If you're hearing any voices. Still really can't see yeah. it on the screen, but yeah. We are at the same time. Vanessa and I both started towards the same one at the same time. Something about this one. It took forever to focus. Interesting. Huh. So 
something about this one. I don't know what it is. And those are actual tunes, aren't they? Over there. That was a huge bug that just flew in front of the moon. Some of the photos that I'm taking, these are the reflection of the lights in my camera, um, which I might have to take the flash off for. They are um, showing up as a pattern on the ground and um, in like a dot formation. So we're going to go ahead and disclose right now that we already know that is not paranormal activity. It is based on these lights right here showing up in a reflection and showing up in a photo in a pattern on the ground. So, just so we go ahead and have that noted. <coughs> there. Yes. You have the camera with the with the light on. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to take the flash off my camera. Oh, okay. Because I don't feel that we need it. And I need it to be a double yeah. area. What's behind that bush? My camera keeps going in and out. Uh, look at this one. I'm not moving. Look at that. Wow. Yep. Go ahead and take a picture anyway. Well, you're not using the flash either, you're using a steady light. Exactly. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. That's another one. Oh, blurry, okay. Okay. out that top floor in the center all the way to the back. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All the way like down a long corridor. It's like all the way down the back.
Using my light still? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I got a sticker in my shoe. Oh no. It's a pretty good one too. Uh, need to get it out? Uh huh. <laughs> Here. I guess you lean on me if you need Can to. Can you put the light on it? Yeah. Hard enough. Not a nettle, so yay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't want a nettle. <laughs> okay, phone. I haven't had any trouble with my phone the entire time we've been here. Until now. I feel like it's like people are present. I feel like there are things, not things, people in here that are intelligent that I don't feel at harm. I don't feel judged. I don't feel bothered. Um, and it's it's our understanding, correct, Gwen, that you know even the homeless won't come in here and sleep at night. Yes. I don't, I don't feel that, but I, I guess I can understand how they would. It could be because if somebody comes in here to sleep for the night, they may feel disrespected. That is very true. Whereas they know why we're here. That is very true. And they could be just being kind to us, treating us like visitors. Well, and we have passed by here quite a few times. Yes. This is just our first time coming in, so that could be it, but I feel okay. Yeah, I don't I feel, feel okay. mm -mm. Should we go out the same way we came in or go out this way? I would say go out the same way we came in. Yeah. Let's That's what that. I'm thinking. And this is just one of those situations where... Some might disagree with what we're doing or, you know, the fact that we're in a cemetery at night or that we're trying to do it for some type of spooky or reactionary reason. And the fact of the matter is nothing could be further from the truth. What we're trying to do is show people that you can be interested in these types of things. You can want to explore what is out there. You can be a part of a community Thank goodness I put on the glasses because there's steps right there. Yeah, that's why I put on the flashlight. Yes. Um, you can do all that without being disrespectful. You can do all that without trying to pressure somebody's deceased loved one into a response. Did you hear that? That was me. I that think. was you? Right here? No. No? It was a swishing sound. Oh. So we'll have to check the film. Okay, because my foot's hitting the grass, yeah. so I thought that might be it. No, it wasn't a walking. It was more like a, it was softer. Than okay, that. okay. Um, like fabric. Um, but you can do all of this and learn without being destructive or confrontational. So, with, you know... With that in mind, hopefully anybody who sees this will see that that is a possibility. We didn't come in here expecting to get a response. We didn't come here in here expecting anything. Right. If they choose to communicate, wonderful. 
Right. That was me cutting off my light. If they choose to communicate, that is fabulous. But they are by no means obligated to us to do so.